So thank you so much, everybody here in attendance today. I tell you what, this is gonna be an exciting one. My name is Brian Riggs. I'm part of the team here at Venturi. We've got an amazing uh, panelist group here. It's gonna be talking to you all things about, okay, this year and talking about ways to grow your inventory. So if I could here, just quickly introduce a couple of folks I have with us. A great friend of mine, Louis King, the co-founder and CEO of Safely. He's with us. We also have a uh, Carrie, so Carrie Mer Merlisa is um, head of business development at Safely and the leading insure tech and guest screening solution for short-term rental industry. Uh, Carrie's actually been with Safely for over four years and supports a, a variety of functions across the executive team, including leading the sales team through all engagements with professional property manager. Actually, prior to this, Carrie was a senior executive in IT and new product development for large financial services companies such as Barclays and American Express. Kerry holds an MBA in finance from New York University. He lives in the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia. And I tell you what, we can all relate to this. In his spare time, Kerry can be found Ubering his twins to endless activities or playing an occasional round of golf. Kerry, so happy that you're here today, my man. Thank you. All right, also we have uh, founder and CEO of Venturi, uh, Brooke Fouts. Brooke Fouts is one of the industry's foremost experts in growing vacation rental inventory. He actually got his start in the industry uh, just over 13 years ago when he founded Vantage Resort Realty in Ocean City, Maryland. And he took an idea of frankly on the back of a napkin to more than 500 properties in just over five years. After a successful exit, Brooke went on to grow inventory for other major vacation rental brands as a chief business development officer in multiple destinations. Most recently, as an executive at a leading vacation rental software company, he saw firsthand through mastermind groups that he launched and facilitated uh, what worked and what didn't work for 20 of the largest, most successful companies in our space. Today, Brooke leads Venturi, the only sales and marketing platform in the vacation rental industry dedicated entirely to helping professional property managers grow and add their best inventory to their rental programs. So, everybody, Welcome, guys. Let's go for it. All right. Well, thank you, Brian. I appreciate that. Let's uh, let's get started. So, I want to start off uh, first off with a question. So, what are your growth goals? And I don't mean just you know the numbers. I mean, why do you want to grow? So, this is going to be a little bit interactive. So, I'd ask everybody if you can please go to Slido.com and enter in the code six six three five six and just type in why you can do it from your mobile phone it's super super simple this is a great tool i think everybody should use um, you can also do it from your computer but if you get a chance just go to slido.com and enter in six six three five six and tell us why you want to grow and i asked this is this is this because you've always dreamed of building a business is this because you want to build a business to sell for say millions of dollars or you, you need revenue to strengthen your operations or because you want to give more families the chance and experience, you know, kind of the magic of that destination and your community. And I like to tell the story. We have a partner, uh, Angie Leone in, uh, in Maui, who owns Coconut Condos. And one of the first questions I asked her when she onboarded with us was, Angie, why do you want to grow? And, you know, her first quick response was like everybody else. It was to make more money. And then when I pushed back, I said, well, why do you want to make more money? And she immediately said, because she wanted to sponsor more children. And that's because Angie is this awesome philanthropist who sponsors all these children in third world countries. And that's what she actually spends every summer doing is actually traveling and helping building schools and, and building houses for uh, these, these children in third world countries. So that was her why. She wanted to do it because of the children. So if everyone could do me a favor real quickly, go to slido.com and again, insert that 66 three, five, six, and just tell us real quickly why you want to grow. All right, so let's get started. So whatever your growth goals are, now is the time to hit on the gas and go into growth mode. So why is that that? Let's dig a little bit deeper. Um, first off, demand for vacation rentals is at an all time high. Vacation rental industry is absolutely on fire. I don't need to tell anybody else you know, on this call that. In most markets, COVID has actually completely benefited our industry. And vacation rentals now are the preferred way to travel and the market is just super, super hot. Well, why else do you wanna grow? Well, tons of competition. More and more vacation rental companies are sprouting up every day. And I think there was a survey done by VRMA uh, just four years ago, and they found that there was about 8,500 vacation rental managers. However, there was a, a study by Hostfully not too long ago, 
and they established there was 23,000 vacation rental management companies. So the growth is just absolutely huge. Here's an example. I did a quick search of vacation rental managers just in one market, and we picked Gatlinburg. And dozens and dozens and dozens of companies came up. I literally couldn't even get to the bottom of it. I just had to stop. And I'm sure uh, more and more are sprouting up every day. And I'm sure most of you, you know, vacation rental managers, you probably had one or two competitors that you compete with when you go head to head uh, for new listings and new management contracts. But now you're probably going head to head against dozens of different companies. So another reason, why would you want to grow? Well, the venture back conglomerates are coming. And as one of our partners said, uh, I think they told us this last week, was Goliath is coming to town and eating up vacation rental managers and stealing our inventory. I don't need to tell anybody on this call that, you know, Vacasa has raised over $635 million. Turnkey raised over $120 million. Obviously now Vacasa has acquired Turnkey, making them even that much more larger. And then there's Evolve who's raised over $120 million as well. And more and more uh, venture back companies are coming into this space. And we are now the pretty girl at the dance. So here is an org chart of Vacasa's business development team. Now, granted, this was a couple of years ago, and this was also pre the turnkey acquisition. So it's actually much greater. But you, you can tell there's 106 people at the time in their business development team, 106 just in BD. So if you're not familiar with the, the word business development or BD, this means owner acquisition or helping them getting more management contracts. So I would think most people on this call right now don't even have 106 people in their entire company let alone 106 people in their uh, biz dev uh, teams. So they have more team members focused exclusively on owner acquisition than 99% of all vacation rental managers have on their entire teams. These companies have dialed in systems for owner acquisition and for them to go public, they need to show exponential growth at any cost and they are flush with cash to do whatever it takes. All right, why else do you wanna grow? Well, every company has natural attrition. So the industry average is about 10%. So in this example, if you have 50 properties and let's just say you lose five properties a year, you are gonna be completely out of inventory in less than 10 years. And I'd say realistically, you're probably gonna be out of business by year five as you probably couldn't uh, cover that overhead when you have such low uh, numbers. And I would even argue these churn numbers are actually being accelerated based on the current uh, hot real estate market. We hear every day from our partners uh, that they're losing so much inventory you know, due to sales. So now I want to shift gears a little bit, and I want to talk about the value of, uh, of inventory and why I think it's the best ROI on the planet. So most vacation rental managers I've met with, they have not gone through an exercise like this, the one I'm going to go through, to truly understand the profits of a new property, uh, new property to their uh, bottom line. So let's look at the value of just one property. So let me first off start off by saying, uh, as, as Brian kind of gave in my intro, I was a former exec at a very large uh, property management software company. We had over a billion dollars in reservations running through our systems. When we uh, did an average, um, if you look at the billion dollars in gross booking revenue across the, the number of properties we had, we found the average gross booking revenue per property came out to about $35,000, $36,000. I've talked to other execs and other uh, in our space, and they've all confirmed that same number. So for this example, and for all examples going forward today, we're going to use 36,000 as the average gross booking revenue. So that's otherwise known as like owner rent. So this is before taxes and fees. So if you have one property that's doing $36,000 in gross booking revenue, and you're like the average property manager and you have a 20% commission, that means you're going to get about $7,200 in commissions or revenue. But the average of what ends up falling to the bottom line, and we've asked this question well over 100 times, comes out to about 10% of the gross booking revenue. So in this case, $3,600. So that means your net profit on a, one property that's doing 36,000 GBR is gonna be $3,600. However, you don't keep a property in your rental program for one year, hopefully. Hopefully you keep it in many years. So how do you compute that customer lifetime in years? So this is a simple formula and I'll kind of walk through it. So to, to come up with that, what you do is you take your customer lifetime to come up with that customer lifetime, you take one divided by your churn. The churn is what percentage of your inventory do you lose in a given year? Now we like to, at Ventory, when we go over this exercise with our partners, we like to average over maybe two to three years just to kind of get any anomalies out there. So like this year is gonna be much greater than maybe last year. So if you take that one divided by 10%, you're gonna come up with a 10 year lifetime. And what we found is this is about average uh, for most property managers. 
So again, you don't keep uh, a property in your rental program for one year. So what is the value of one property after 10 years? So following this example, you got 360,000 in GBR, $72,000 in commissions, and $36,000 in margins. So here's a quick little hack. If you wanna calculate your lifetime value, it is almost always within a couple percentage points, it's almost always whatever your projected gross booking revenue is of that property. So here again, property doing 36K, your lifetime value in profits is gonna be about that same number, 36K. All right, so not only though, is there value of inventory on an ongoing basis with those profits that you have along the way, there's also value of every single contract that you have. And this is the true value of your, your business. It's those management contracts. So um, if you talk to anybody in the, you know, anyone that does M&A, uh, mergers and acquisitions in this uh, industry, they talk about the value of those contracts. So I'm going to go through a couple different methods of valuing a management contract. So first up is percentage of revenue. So there are companies out there that just buy contracts. So in, in fact, at Ventory, we have about a dozen companies that have hired us to just uh, buy these contracts from us and what we call our outsourced business development team. So we sell those contracts for about 25% of the projected gross booking revenue. So if you take that same property that's doing 36K, you multiply it times 25%, that means each one of those contracts is worth about $9,000. All right, at Vintory, we also have a mergers and acquisitions department. Um, so this is where we help uh, vacation rental managers buy and sell those companies. And we've seen a ton of different uh, transactions that have happened and all these different acquisitions, um, both that we've helped facilitate and then other deals that are out there. And if we take the average uh, of those deals over the last uh, 12 months from just the information that we had uh, available, it came out to about $11,000 per contract, or as they say, sometimes uh, uh, price per door. The next method is what they call the multiple of earnings. And this is the most popular method in valuing a vacation rental manager. Um, most companies are valued as a percentage of their net earnings or otherwise known as their profit or EBITDA. So again, sticking with this 3,600 and the, the multiples fall anywhere between just call it three to five times. Obviously you can go outside those numbers, but that's the kind of the bell curve. Um, so for this example, a property doing 36,000 with 10% margins, you multiply that times uh, four times multiple, you're going to get a valuation of a little bit over $14,000 per door or per property. And the last, we're going to talk about Vacasa's acquisition of Turnkey. So most people obviously heard this news. The number was rumored to be right about $120 million. They had 6,000 properties in their portfolio. So that puts a valuation of about $20,000 per door uh, for that acquisition. So if you only take one thing from this slide, and that is there is a significant value of every new management contract that you get. As seen here, it ranges anywhere between $9,000 and $20,000 per contract. So just keep that in the back of your mind as you're sitting across the table from a new owner and coming into your rental program, that's what the value of that one contract will be if and when you decide to sell this business. So here's kind of like an outline. Here's what we're gonna be going over today. So first off, we're gonna talk about growing smarter, growing faster and growing bigger. So how do we do that? We do that in three different ways. We're gonna do it through cap, uh, target, through capture and convert. And we'll break these down into each one of these steps. So first up is target. So step one is make a plan, set those goals and kind of build out the roadmap and the playbook for your growth strategy. Number two is we want to talk about data. 50% of all marketing relies on data. So we're going to talk about why that's so critically important and where you can get that data from. Once you've done that, we're going to go into capture. We want to talk about leveraging CRMs and talk about different tools that are out there that you can use to help you be more efficient. We're going to highlight how you can uh, nail an owner landing page, which I argue is probably the lowest hanging fruit in your inventory acquisition game. And then probably the most, uh, the most important part and kind of the, the meat of this is the executing that omni-channel marketing approach, uh, going after those uh, ICPs or your ideal customer profile. Then we're going to throw it over to Kerry. He's going to talk about some different tools you can do on converting, how you can address uh, homeowners fears, and then what happens uh, when something does go wrong. So with that said, let's get started. So we found that most vacation rental managers probably spend more time picking out their cleaning supplies or picking out their company swag than they do on an actually inventory acquisition plan. But based on the value of inventory and the return on investment we talked about earlier, uh, we'd argue this is the most uh, important area you can invest. So I love this quote. Most people don't plan to fail, they fail to plan. So make that plan, set that goal. 
you know, where do you want to end the year with inventory? You know, uh, how many homes are you expecting to churn? You know, uh, again, remember the industry average is about 10%. And this year that number has been accelerated. And this gives you kind of a number that you need to start going for. So I'm just going to do a very, very quick, simple uh, example. So let's say your goal is to have 60 properties. You're currently at 50 properties. You, you're expecting to maybe churn five properties this year. So this at least, at least gives us a target goal of 15 properties you want to go after. However, there are a couple of things you may want to consider. First off is, you know, can you onboard that many? You know, do you actually have the team to onboard? We, we signed up one new partner and they had 20 properties and they said their goal was to end the year with 100 properties. Um, that's a pretty aggressive goal. <laughs> so be realistic. I mean, not to say it can't be done, but it's definitely very aggressive. And also remember, there is a cost to acquire every new customer um, or what we call as CAC. Um, and at, just as a reference point, we found that uh, uh, at Vacasa, their organic CAC was about $2,400 per property. So just keep that as a baseline that, again, there is some kind of marketing cost associated with uh, getting those new owners onto your program. So the next step is to understand all of your marketing sources of those new deals, you know, and estimate your goal by each one of those sources. So let's just say you have, you know, referrals, you're doing it through realtors, you got deals coming in through your website, you got it through direct mail, um, and maybe even like PPC. So get a good understanding of where your deals are coming from. And this at least gives you kind of like a starting point. So what, what I like to do is we recommend for all of our partners is to reverse engineer your goals to understand what you need to do. So here's an example for direct mail, and I, I'm going to make it very, very simple. So let's just say you're going to send a thousand letters out. The direct marketing association says the average response rate in direct mail is one half of 1%. So if you have a thousand letters, you get a half a percent response rate. That's going to net you about five calls. Look, traditionally, this is another reason why to use a CRM, but look at what your close rate is, your conversion rate. Um, we see it at around that 20%. So if that's the case, that's going to net you one contract. So again, 1,000 letters out, that's you one contract. And we can even calculate our CAC on that. If we knew our 1,000 letters cost us $1,000, then our CAC in this one example would be $1,000. So if your goal was to get five contracts, we can, again, reverse engineer this. So we know, again, the 20% uh, conversion rate. That means we need to get 25 calls. We know the response rate, uh, according to the Direct Marketing Association, is one half of 1%. So that means to net five contracts, we need to send out 5,000 letters. However, we would, uh, you know, I would say you don't have to mail all 5,000 in one drop. In fact, we actually recommend hitting them over and over and over again. And I'd rather hit the same target five times over five months and 5,000 targets all at once. You do get a boost effect. You do get a lift in that response rate. The key with direct marketing, and again, if you remember one thing, it'd be the key in direct marketing is uh, consistency. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that later. Next up, let's talk about data. So data is probably one of the most, I'd say underestimated tools for inventory acquisition. 50% um, of all marketing really just comes down to the list. Um, so you can have the greatest looking marketing in, in, in the world, but if you're not hitting your targets, it's not going to do you any good. So that's why Ventory, we actually have five data uh, analysts on our team that are doing nothing but just focused on getting the right targets uh, for our partners. So let's talk a little bit about where you can get that data. So there's a couple of different sources. The first is public tax records. So if your state has an easy way to find and retrieve this, this is probably going to be the cheapest and easiest way. Um, uh, it's often affiliated with MLS services. It can sometimes be challenging, you know, downloading that. Some states you, and, and uh, municipalities, you can only do it like one record at a time, so it can be kind of challenging. So if that's the case, if you can't do it that way, I would recommend going to a list broker. Easiest, cleanest way, um, you just have to pay for that data. So a bunch of different sources out there. If anyone does a quick Google search, you'll see dozens and dozens and dozens. There's Info USA, there's Exact Data, and there's a million more out there. So I will say this though, if you do use a list broker, you want to ask for those emails and phones. And I'll explain a little bit uh, later why this is important for a couple of different other marketing uh, channels we can do. Next up, permit data. So in many markets, if they require a vacation rental permit, you can actually get that list from the town or the county of these owners. And because of the Freedom of Information Act, it is actually public. Now, I will say this, it is very challenging to get. Um, some, they're going to make you sometimes jump through a bunch of hoops. I've heard the different uh, townships actually requiring you to go in, pay with cash or pay with a check. 
Um, sometimes you even have to drop off like a memory stick, like they, they don't make it easy to do. Now there's other markets like Nashville, for example, where it's super simple. You can actually just go onto their website and download it very easily. Um, but again, this permit data is uh, is kind of your, your prime uh, data, if you will, because you, you've kind of, you think about it, you've lost the objection that they don't rent their property out. Um, now be careful, some of these, you're not allowed to solicit the listings of other uh, vacation rental companies, if that's the case, and just make sure you're kind of obeying your, your local uh, uh, laws and things like that. Now, if you really want to be a baller, uh, you can hire someone to scrape the OTAs and then overlay that information with all this other data. So, um, you, you know, you'll definitely, you know, most likely, unless you have really mad Excel skills, you're going to need to hire somebody. Uh, we recommend a couple of different uh, websites like Upwork and Fiverr, a great place to get people that can actually do this, but they overlay all this information together. They match, they append all these lists. Now you've got a really good starting point for all your data. And remember what we talked about before, the list is 50% of all marketing. All right, let's talk about CRM. So we've established the, you know, the value of a new property and some of those earlier slides, we've talked about leads are super expensive. Um, so therefore tracking leads is critical. So, um, however, it doesn't need to be fancy or expensive. I would just suggest, you know, ditch the post-it notes, go away from that. Um, it can be as simple as Google Sheets. Uh, the key is just to track them uh, somewhere. And this will help with conversions. This is help with follow-up. This is going to help with uh, lead nurturing in the future. And this is a future gold mine. So here are a couple of examples. Uh, like we said, just simple. It could be Google Sheets. Uh, HubSpot is a fantastic CRM. They actually have a free version, which is really, really uh, powerful. Uh, the 800 pound gorilla, you know, Salesforce, just you'll, you'll need to hire someone most likely to help you set it up. And then there's a dozen other companies similar to like Zoho. Uh, and another little shameless plug here at Ventory. Ventory actually has built a, a CRM uh, and sales and marketing platform from the ground up specifically for vacation home managers to grow their inventory. So we, we've got all the, the bells and whistles in there to help nurture those deals along the way. All right, so next up, I wanna talk about owner landing pages. So when people ask me what's the number one thing that they can do to increase their inventory, uh, this is it. Um, you, you think about it, most companies have tons of organic traffic like already coming to the site, right? So everyone spends all this time you know, funneling all this traffic there and, and also converting guests, which is great. You need to do that. But if you look at their new owner page, it's awful. And you, you have people organically going to that, that website. So that would be the first place I go to. So I would say, you know, after consulting with well over 100 vacation rental management companies, this is probably one of the biggest mistakes I see is not having a good landing page on their website for new property owners. And this is also one of the simplest things to fix that has an immediate ROI. Again, this is the lowest hanging fruit out there. So if you only do one thing after listening to this presentation, it's going to be polish up that owner landing page. Um, it's, uh, you know, there's a bunch of different strategies out there to improve that landing page. I could go over these. It would probably take an entire presentation, just what you need to do to kind of improve that. But I will say, if anybody emails me at brook, B-R-O-O-K-E at Ventory.com, we have an infographic, uh, free guide, uh, elements of a great landing page. It kind of gives you the, the playbook or the template, if you will, uh, to go ahead and build that uh, new landing page. It gives you all the kind of the key things you want to highlight in there. So again, email me, brook, uh, with an E at Ventory.com. So a couple uh, just quick little pro hacks uh, for that. First up would be to build an explainer video. So if you don't know how to build an explainer video, again, go to Upwork, go to Fiverr. You can get them done very inexpensively. Um, when salesforceswork.com, they added an explainer video to their homepage, their conversion rates increased by 20%. A um, couple other things you want to do kind of to that owner landing page is, you know, load those retargeting pixels on there. You know, get a Google Tag Manager. You know, you want to target these leads later. This is super, super valuable data. Another thing we recommend uh, to increase conversions is add chat. So HubSpot has a chat feature, Intercom, Drift, and then our, uh, our platform inventory has a chat built directly into it that we load on these owner pages. So do anything you can to kind of increase that conversion. All right, let's get to the meat of this, omni-channel marketing. So the old days of sending, you know, just one postcard a year, they are long gone. Today's top vacation rental managers, they are executing more of a, um, called a proactive omni-channel marketing program. And we are gonna uh, break down into each one of these. So first up, direct mail. Um, direct mail is not dead. You know, the vacation rental industry is one of the few industries where direct mail still works. 
The key with direct mail, as I said before, and I'm going to say it again, is consistency, 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 consistency. The math works if you do it consistently. Um, you know, here are some different examples of some different things you can do. You can do the traditional postcard. So in this case, uh, this postcard, you know, we've actually used, um, it's a six by 11 postcard. It actually does what's called digital dynamic variable printing. So you can actually merge in each individual uh, postcard can actually kind of pull in different information. You can swap out pictures, you can swatch out name, swap out names. You can get a, you know, even kind of customize your USPs or unique selling propositions based on the pain points of the personas that you're going after. So you can, every single one can be variable. So it's really, uh, we really like to leverage that uh, digital dynamic variable printing. Um, just do a couple of different examples. Uh, we've had a lot of success with these handwritten letters. There's a ton of different companies out there that use these robots that hold real pens and do real handwriting. Uh, it gets a nice lift in the response rates because people aren't used to seeing it. Um, this was a surpriser for me. So we actually did a bunch of uh, holiday cards and happy new year cards with really no call to action on there. And these were actually some of our best performing uh, uh, letters that went out. Um, and this is my favorite. So this is actually uh, a market report. Um, it's on a six by 11 uh, card stock, almost like a postcard. And what we did is we actually just leveraged data from key data dashboards and inputted it into this, uh, to this letter. And the idea of this was to kind of position our, our partner as a expert in the market in vacation rentals. So if you consistently dripping this information in front of them, and again, it's readily available through a great, uh, great source like key data dashboards, you can go ahead and uh, push that out. And again, position you as that market leader in the industry. The key again, I'll say it again, consistency. All right, remember when I said to get those emails from your list broker? Well, this is one of the reasons why. So this was a huge surprise for me and people actually do respond to emails, um, but you don't need to do it in a spammy different way. You, gotta, you can do it in a nice kind of classy way, if you will. Um, and, uh, you know, there's different things you can do. There's lots of different, you know, books out there and, and blogs about like the uh, proper strategy on a cold email outreach. Um, but I'll give you an example. We have a partner in Hawaii. Uh, first email campaign we did, he got two deals from, and they were uh, average gross booking revenue, about $100,000 per property. So that was about 200K in gross booking revenue. And if you remember our little hack from before, that 200K equaled his lifetime uh, value in profits. So that means one email campaign generated $200,000 in lifetime profits. So I would argue that's a pretty solid ROI. A um, couple different, there's tons of different like uh, cold email outreach tools out there. Uh, one that we would highly recommend is Mailshake uh, that make it uh, nice and easy. Just make sure you're following any kind of uh, laws uh, around spam laws. All right, next up, let's talk about PPC. So PPC should be an important part of that inventory growth strategy. So why? Because guess what? PPC works. Um, however, you want to focus on those right keywords and the keywords with owner intent. So paid search traffic, you know, really has a high intent to research information and take action. But the overall number of owners searching is guess what? It's super, super low. You got tons of people searching on the guest side of things, but actually owners specifically looking for this, it's very difficult and it's, there's not a lot of traffic for it. So what you want to do is you want to cast a, as wide a net as possible. You also want to be as accurate as possible. There's a bunch of different tools out there that can kind of help you with this process. Um, at Ventory, we actually have an entire digital marketing team that's focused exclusively on this. We typically find, believe it or not, we actually are using almost 50 to 70 unique keywords, um, you know, concepts to bid on uh, for this paid search. So again, you want to go really wide uh, and be very, very uh, specific on that uh, because you're just not going to have a ton of traffic, but it does work out over time. All right, let's talk about list-based retargeting. So this has been a huge game changer for us. So previously, the only real way to get in front of your prospect targets was, guess what, through what we talked about before, it was through direct mail. But now with list-based retargeting through companies like Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, and LinkedIn, you can actually serve up display ads directly at your targets. And I'm not talking about like this triangulating format of doing it where you're leveraging you know, their likes and interest and what they follow and things like that. I'm talking about, we're actually serving these up directly to them. So after you've established your list of, uh, of properties that you want to go after, what you want to do is then you want to do an email and phone append to these owners. Again, back to my uh, list burger comment about making sure you're getting uh, emails and phones. And then what you do is you can upload that list to Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. 
And then you can serve up those display ads directly at those targets. Again, this is a game changer. What's great about this is that if you kind of time this in conjunction with your other marketing efforts, you get this uh, boost effect uh, for your other marketing. So let me walk you through an example. So let's just say you set up a list-based retargeting campaign and we recommend it about a week or two before your direct mail goes out. So now your targets are seeing on Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn, they're seeing your ads everywhere. And then you send the direct mail piece out, right? So now they have it in their inbox. And then you want to follow up afterwards about a week later or two to three days later with an email campaign. And the combination of this omni-channel marketing approach has a compounding effect, which is going to increase uh, conversion rates. Hopefully they go onto your landing page, which you're obviously cooking, and then you can retarget them from there. All right, so there are lots of moving parts to administer when it comes to list-based retargeting. Um, with that said, there's a lot of uh, really cool tools to make it much, much easier for you to do. Uh, Retargeter is a great one, uh, ad roll, uh, perfect audience. So here's a couple of different tools that you can leverage to make your uh, list-based retargeting much easier. All right, here's another marketing channel uh, that I would say is an, another game changer. It's called IP targeting. So this is where you can upload a list of your targets and it searches for the IP address. Then it serves up those display ads directly on your target's computers. So between this and the list-based retargeting, for the first time ever, we're actually able to push out digital marketing to targets without them having to go to their website and cookie them. Um, with the exception of the large venture-backed companies and the partners that, you know, inventory partners with, nobody is doing this, and your competitors certainly aren't either. All right. Let's talk about pixel-based or cookie retargeting. You know, this has been around for years, um, and I'm sure most of you are familiar with this. I'm sure a lot of you are doing this for guest marketing, but this is where you place a pixel or a cookie, and it's placed on your landing page uh, or specific pages of your website. So for our example, we're talking about here is we'd have a specific one on our property management page. And the prospect is tracked as we serve up those ads to targets on channels like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, or even LinkedIn. Or we can even do it on display ads as they surf the web. So if they go to ESPN, if they're going to CNN, Fox News, Weather Channel, whatever it happens to be, they're serving up those ads, you know, kind of bringing them back. And why is this important? Well, this is important because we know even the best performing landing pages out there, 80 to 95% of the traffic actually doesn't convert. So we want to do anything in our power to convert those leads and bring them back. So we're going to do whatever we can to get them to re-engage uh, and fill out that form. At Ventory, we even have another uh, a source. It's called direct mail retargeting. So we can place one of those pixels on our uh, landing page. And within 48 hours, we can actually send a direct mail letter to them automatically, bringing them back into the funnel if they didn't fill out that form the first time. All right, so I'm going to throw it over to Carrie, but I will say this. So at Ventory, one of the things we've always recommended for our partners to do is to differentiate your offering and your company by adding features and services that make you stand out from the competition of these property owners. So we've actually had a bunch of our, um, our partners partner up directly with Safely and leverage their product as a differentiator when they're marketing to vacation rental uh, property owners. Hence why I thought this was a perfect idea to, to kind of co-sponsor this webinar with Safely. Safely. So with that said, I'll throw it over to Gary. Take it away, Gary. Gary, are you there? hit the wrong mute button there you yeah, go. Thanks, bro. Uh, <laughs> you just learned a lot from brooke about the value of a homeowner what it means from your churn what that means to add that new homeowner to your business well and how to get them get them to that first meeting uh get in front of them but how do you then convert them uh one of the things that we talk about it safely is you know you have to differentiate yourself as as Brooke just alluded to. You have to remove friction with homeowners and guests, uh, and find a way to really delight your homeowners. And hopefully, some of those things are what you're going to hear about in the next few minutes in how safely can help you do that, and to convert more of those homeowners, convert more of them faster. Maybe you'll find you have a different source. Maybe you are getting more referrals from your other homeowners and your CAC goes down. Uh, but all those things are possibilities and maybe you're converting them faster and easier. Uh, and these are experiences that our clients have had. So when we talk about you know, what successful PMs are able to do to convert things, convert them faster and differentiate themselves, uh, 
you know, they're able to answer a couple key questions better than their competitor down the street. Again, Brooke alluded to the competitive nature. You have startups, you have big conglomerates happening, and maybe you're caught in the middle. So how do you differentiate yourself and, and provide superior value? So by answering these two key questions, who's staying in my property and what happens when something does go wrong? And I think you'll find if you can answer those questions, you'll find that you can delight your customers. You can reduce that friction uh, and you will really differentiate yourself and, and acquire and convert these PMs faster. Uh, so how do you answer that first question? Who's staying in my house? Next slide, Tim. You know, the traditional ways of some of you have been in the business a long time. Some of you might have just started, but traditionally there was, and you were allowed to do this. There was a gut feel. You talked to them, you, and in the last 15 years, maybe you looked them up online and tried to scare them away if you didn't like them. You know, all of those get trickier and trickier in today's world. You open yourselves up to discrimination, uh, other, other challenges, and it's really not very scientific. And so what are the alternatives to, you know, that gut feel and just sort of hoping you get the right guest? Go to the next slide. Well, you have to turn these internet strangers into these trusted guests somehow. And there are capabilities out there, safely being one of them, uh, where we can help you turn those strangers into those trusted guests. Uh, why is that important? Well, that bad guest, we hear about it all the time. It, you'll lose a homeowner over it. Uh, your reputational risk gets uh, thrown under the bus. And so not only do you lose the one homeowner, you might have lost the next 10 homeowners that they're referring. Uh, so you have to prevent those worst things from happening. So how to safely maybe help you do that? Go to, or how, what is out there to help you do that? You should screen your guests. You know, I think we've heard enough stories with Airbnb and other things that, you know, some of the ratings just aren't enough and doing your own booking sites, you might not have any capability, uh, but screen your guests, look for the worst things, check that, do an ID verification, make sure that that name, address, date of birth is even valid. There's fake IDs out there that people try to book and take advantage of your property. But you can also check watch lists, sex offender lists, felony criminal checks. Uh, and in some cases, you know, like safely, we actually even have a bad guest database, people that have caused inappropriate damage. Uh, so you're gonna to wanna to screen people, screen guests uh, in these categories. And believe it or not, none of these are, these are all considered unprotected classes. So if it gets to that point, you don't have to let that guest stay in your home. You don't have to let that sex offender stay there. You don't have to let that felon stay there. Uh, next slide. Hey, real quick, I just will kind of jump on that. We've, we've had a couple of partners that we share with Safely. And again, they've leveraged this when they're meeting directly with those homeowners. This has been some of the reasons why they signed up with that property management company it was literally just because they had this feature and they were very apprehensive uh, about listing their home. They were what we call in the persona first time Franks. Um, so it, it is a nice uh, tool to kind of differentiate. Sorry to hijack you there, Terry. So now you've screened out the worst guests and actually I'll give a little other plug. I don't usually talk about it, but we have a, an additional tool coming in the fall. We've already built it. Uh, we've tested it, but we haven't rolled it out productionized where it might not be that felon check, but we'll we know the 10% of the guests that cause 70% of the problems using our algorithms and our data analytics. We Brooke talked about his data. We use this data to say that those, we can kind of predict the worst reservation. So while they didn't hit the big red flag as a criminal, I could, we can tell you, hey, this is still a risky reservation. This is the person, maybe you don't do keyless entry. Maybe you take them something, take them a case of water, let them know somebody's around. So it's a double way to protect your homeowners, keep them, reduce churn. And as Brooke just said, you know, you're going to start attracting these other ones. So another one of the, you know, the homeowners always assume the worst. So 
how do you address that fear of, you know, well, what's going to happen when something does go wrong? You can, next slide. You know, they assume the worst. They hear the horror stories from Airbnb. So, and they're wondering what you're going to do about it. So in some cases, you know, traditionally you might say, well, you need some kind of commercial policy to protect yourself. Uh, that's a scary proposition. One, those policies can be expensive. Two, um, you hit them a couple times, you end up losing that policy uh, and, you know, that, for that individual. Three, they have very high deductibles, so they're not gonna cover that first 90% of stuff that does typically happen. Uh, and so, you know, and they let them lapse, they might not leave you protected. So there's a lot of challenges and that's traditionally been historically been one of your only options. Uh, there are some other things, go to the next slide. You know, some of the other traditional options really are sufficient. You know, deposits are, should be dead. They suppress reservations. They're usually not a high enough amount to cover damage that anything happens. Credit cards, you know, if you charge more than a hundred bucks to them, they're probably gonna charge it back unless they're a saint. Uh, some people like to self-insure. It can be a nice little revenue stream. Um, but I can tell you, unless you have 500 homes, and even then it's still not the best thing for your guests and your homeowners, uh, there are better alternatives because you're still tech cover guests, accident only. You're going to upset your homeowners uh, if it's anything over your small limit. So it really leaves you unprotected. And then the traditional products that have been out there for a long time, they tend to be guest policy only. They're accident only usually. So most of the things that do go wrong, uh, you're not even going to get covered for when they throw a party, bring a pet, uh, light the deck on fire, throw the couch in the pool. You're not going to be covered. And then the OTAs, we'll call it insufficient at best. Most of them don't even have protection. Airbnb has more of a marketing policy. Uh, and, you know, some people have had success with it and others have been very frustrated with the experience. So, you know, it, you're, it's hit or miss. Go next slide. So safely design a program to fill these gaps and, you know, cover the things when you go wrong. Uh, as I mentioned before, it's not one thing that goes wrong. It's many things. You know, you, it's not just, oh, the couch was scratched. It's the couch was damaged. The counter's damaged. Uh, they spilled stuff on the carpet. There's four or five things and you end up with, you know, a $7,000 damage issue. And so what's going to happen? You're either going to lose your homeowner over it. You're going to fight with the guests. You're going to get bad reviews. Uh, all those friction things that happen that safely can help you eliminate. So, Next slide. So how do we do this? So obviously I alluded to it with the guest screening, but we do provide this built into our program uh, through most of the PMSs. We have a lot of PMSs that we're integrated with already, and it's a pretty automated process to screen these. So we do an ID verification. We do check for terrorists and other watch lists, sex offender lists, felonies, our own bad guest database, and the safely score that I alluded to. They're considered unprotected classes. We do it after the reservation, so we don't interfere with your booking flow. If you see something that uh, that you are uncomfortable and you want to cancel that, we help you actually legally cancel that and meets meet with uh, meets with FCRA compliance. Uh, then our damage protection. You know, we feel proudly that we have the best protection plan in the industry for you. We designed it to fill the gaps like I described on the previous pages. And we have everything from just pure damage insurance, really that, that deposit replacement, uh, up to very high, high policies. They're all commercial policies. They're all pr primary. So we have things from $1,500 to a $1 million of coverage. And that can be structure damage. So big things, your walls, floors, ceilings. Uh, to bodily injury, somebody gets hurt and they sue you, they sue the property manager. Well, what happens and safely will protect you and I'll describe that in a second. Uh, and all the, that, those higher policies will include $10,000 of contents coverage. 
So you can really protect yourself. Some people are comfortable uh, that they just need that sort of gap coverage and can have 5,000 or 10,000 of coverage from us and others you know, need those million dollar policies. Some cases there are regulatory issues like Massachusetts where you need a million dollars of bodily injury protection and we would satisfy those requirements. There's a lot of reasons why you, you might need various policies. But these next two things are very critical and why we've really distinguished ourselves and can help you differentiate yourself. Uh, all three people in every reservation are additionally insured. So this is not your traditional guest only policy. We actually protect the homeowner, we protect your business, and we protect the guest. And unlike those guest only policies, when that are typically null and void as soon as it's not an accident, you know, the baby knocked over the line. With us, we are even gonna cover the non-accidental damage. So if it is malicious, deliberate, deliberate, intentional, we actually will still cover that guest cause damage. So they can bring a pet, throw a party, smoke in the unit, throw the couch in the, in the hall. Uh, we're still gonna cover that guest cause, guest cause damage, believe it or not. Are those things that all happen, Carrie? <laughs> oh, we've had people ski off roofs. We've had bears come into uh, homes and they didn't leave the bear guard up. So that's technically guest cause damage. So even a bear is guest cause damage. Uh, yeah, we, we've had some doozies. Great. Uh, those things are, yeah, frequently happen. So, you know, again, Brooke told you how Vintory can really help you attract and locate those property managers and build your list and build up that inventory. Uh, we want to help you close them, close them faster, close them easier. And, and, you know, you really do need to differentiate and while your owners be different from the person down the street. We actually will produce brochures for you to help tell that safely story. You know, when we look at, when we talk to property managers uh, and um, as you do, we know the homeowners, while they might ask 50 questions, it boils down to about three or four. They're gonna say, hey, are you gonna get me revenue? And you say, yeah, here's my track record. Are you gonna take care of my place? You say, well, here's my cleaning crew and here's my uh, maintenance crew. <clears throat> but then they say, well, who are you sticking in my place? And what happens when something goes wrong? Just like we described at the start. And now you get to say, well, I use safely. So I'm going to screen out those criminals and creepos. And I have the best protection plan to protect you and your most prized asset. So if somebody gets hurt, something gets stolen, something gets broken, we're going to get it taken care of for you. And as Brooke mentioned, how some he had some experience with some of our clients using this to attract homeowners. We hear it all the time. It's, it's one of the most powerful messages of it, of that and removing that friction. You know, I'll give you a couple quick examples. We had a large PM down in Florida. He used to self-insure. He said, I didn't sleep at night. I knew I wasn't doing the right thing by my homeowners. I wasn't doing the right thing by my guests. Um, and he said, now my acquisitions literally take 20 minutes. I go in, I give them my pitch about how I get the money. And then I pull out the safely brochure and I say, and I got you protected better than anybody else on the island. And he said, I close in 20 minutes. I'm driving my onboarding team nuts <laughs> to the onboarding. You know, are you ready to onboard as many as you're pulling in? So, you know, speeding up acquisitions is a way to reduce that, that cat cost and to meet those growth uh, challenges and, and, and growth goals that you're setting. We've had clients that you know, do grow organically and they use this in every pitch and they want to grow methodically and grow 15 a year. And we had some started with you know, six or seven properties. They joined us and they add 10 to 12 every year. And we are a big part of how they can attract and recruit those homeowners. We've had people on the, they uh, more aggressively use it to differentiate from their competitors. You know, one of the stories I like time kind of ties some of the topics together. Uh, 
you know, we had a client that had about 80 properties. He, after a year of, you know, me talking to him, chasing him down, harassing him, he finally signed up and he quickly grew to 130 properties. And he said, I would go in and say, here, you know, here, I'm going to get you money. And look, I use safely. See that guy down the street? He charges the same amount to the guest for $1,000 and safely is give, giving you $500,000 of coverage. Um, this is why you sign with me and not them. He was that aggressive with it. He grew to 130 properties. He sold out to the Casa, the Evil Empire. And just now he is his uh, non-competes up and he has come back to safely and he wants to go from five homes back to 130 homes again and we were his second vendor call and said hey i need you to help me do this again and then we've had people take over whole buildings uh you know because they could differentiate it satisfy the homeowners association that they were screening guests and going to get stuff fixed frankly even in common areas our, our stuff extends to that that and so people have been over the take over the management of whole buildings so it can help you acquire and close homes uh better than alternatives next slide and then i think we're pretty much yeah, awesome. well, that that's uh well said gary and uh some great uh, benefits there and again a lot of our partners uh use it and uh with with a great success and a lot of them even use it in their marketing their their proactive uh you know, as a, a USP, uh, unique selling proposition on their, um, their marketing, outbound marketing. So um, it's a great, great tool to leverage. So let's uh, kind of just do a, a quick little uh, key takeaways. So again, um, make a plan, right? Set those goals, do a little bit of math uh, and, you know, and take your time to set, do your setup and, and setting up that strategy. Um, use data, right? So remember lists are 50% of all marketing. So gather the data from multiple sources, Hire somebody if you're if you don't have uh, really good Excel skills. Hire somebody that can uh, refine those lists and append those lists uh, to really give you a good starting point. Um, also, we want we talked about the CRM. So use some kind of management. Do not use the Post-it note, even if it's Excel spreadsheet or Google Sheets. Use something uh, to track these leads. They're super super valuable. Uh, so make sure you're uh, tracking them in some kind of CRM. Um, Again, lowest hanging fruit out there. Update that owner landing page. Email me at brooke at ventory.com. Happy to go over kind of the kind of the makeup and the, the ideal template of a, a good uh, landing page. Um, leverage that use uh, that omni-channel marketing approach. Again, one postcard a year doesn't cut it anymore. You need to kind of use a multi uh, multiple uh, complementary uh, marketing tactics. And then, Kerry, I'll let you kind of uh, close it out. Yeah, and I think we hit on these things, you know, address those owner fears. They do assume the worst. So, you know, protect the homeowners uh, from lawsuits, damage staff, protect the guests from themselves. You know, you're really trying to protect their most precious asset. So, and then remove that friction from the guests, the homeowners, your staff, it'll delight your team. Uh, all those things will make your company better, make it a better place that homeowners want to work with you and not somebody else there you go all right so let's uh let's throw it up for questions so brian if you're still with us do um i know we have a couple of minutes here uh do we have any uh questions or yes we do actually if i could just remind everybody if you look at the bottom of your screen you'll see a component there that says q a feel free to write out if you have any questions there i've got a couple here um that have come in and so kind of consolidating this a bit, but I guess the first one uh, that I saw here, fellas, was I think Brooke was addressed to you, and I know you mentioned about, hey, email you if you have questions about the landing page. But the question here was about, hey, you talked about uh, updating your owner landing page as one of the lowest hanging fruits out there to increase your leads. Can you describe in greater detail some specifics of what you would recommend? Yeah, and again, I could give an entire session just on that, um, but uh, just at a very high level. Again, first off, email me, brooke at ventory.com, and I'm happy to send that uh, infographic to anybody. Um, but the first thing I would say is, first and foremost, is make it easy to find from your homepage, right? So in the upper right-hand corner, put some kind of a contrasting color button mm -hmm. that says, like, partner with us or enroll now or list your property. Do something to highlight it. It's amazing. Like, we have partners that sign up with us and I can't even find their uh, property management page. 
And if you, again, if you look at the ROI uh, on that, um, you want to make it as easy as possible. So once you actually get to that landing page, I would say you want um, big, you know, hero image, you know, kind of again, that hero image is your brand. So anything you can highlight, maybe highlight one of your typical properties, a really nice property. Um, but you want that form to be above the uh, fold. You don't want the, you know, the form, first off, <laughs> you want a form like to capture their information because most uh, many companies don't even do that. They just have make, maybe an email link, but I would uh, just a very simple uh, form above the fold. You want the optimal number of fields. You don't, if the more questions you ask, the response rate reduces, you know, kind of in correspondence. So just the, what's the bare minimum information you need. So name, uh, you know, email, phone, maybe like give them a you know, property address if you want, but maybe make that optional. Uh, and then maybe even uh, just a comment field uh, that they can enter in some information. But again, keep it as simple as possible. Um, we like we uh, we recommend leveraging some kind of meeting scheduler tool like in there to reduce friction. Um, so to make it as easy as possible, kind of save that back and forth. Um, so Calendly is one. Uh, HubSpot has one. Ventory, you know, in our our platform, we have a built-in uh, calendar schedule uh, scheduler tool. Um, we would also recommend uh, putting like trust icons in there. So trust icons are, if you're, you know, A plus on Better Business Bureau, you know, highlight that. If you're Airbnb super host, put it on there. Um, whatever you're, you know, assuming your Google star rating, you know, Google My Business is high, leverage that. If you're a you know, member of the VRMA or the local uh, area uh, chambers, you know, highlight that. Build that, you know, trust icons are kind of like a, a form of social proof. Uh, kind of speaking of social proof, quotes. Right. You want to get as many quotes from owners that you can out there. Uh, if they'll let you leverage like which building they're in or which area, like put that in there. People want to you know, see that people similar to them are kind of signing up with you. Social proof is a huge, huge uh, um, a, a way of converting. Um, we call um, kind of USPs, your unique selling propositions, uh, like what sets you apart, what makes you different. If you partner with a company like Safely, uh, you know, highlight that on there because that might be a differentiator than everybody else. Um, uh, risk reversals. So risk reversals are what can you do to reduce friction in the buying process? So these are things to make it so easy to sign up that, you know, an idiot would have to, uh, to do it. Um, so like no long-term contracts uh, would be a risk reversal, no startup fees. Um, and, and the last but not least, but probably one of the most important ones uh, is compelling offer. Um, so what can you do? What's some kind of compelling offer that makes them want to uh, sign up? Uh, with you. Um, I'll be very, you know, candid and honest. Uh, Vacasa has a great one. You know, it's, we, we guaranteed to, you know, improve your rental income by $5,000 uh, guaranteed. Um, and uh, that's, that's a great way. So again, 50% of that um, is list and data. 30% is compelling offer. 20% is your overall copy. Um, so yeah, that, that would be the elements. And there's a bunch more, but again, email me, uh, Brooke at Ventory.com. Happy to send that uh, infographic out to everybody that wants that. So um, Brian, any, any other questions or do we have time for maybe one more? I think we have time for one more, if that's okay. And this kind of sure. open it up maybe for, for all of you here. But um, so we got a question here. So what's the best advice on selling a business besides just the numbers that we went over? And I know that, again, we're, we're careful here from a disclaimer perspective, but um, can you guys speak to that? Yeah. So um, I'll speak and I'll maybe throw it if Carrie wants to address it or Louie, but um you know, selling a business. Uh, we, so mentor, we do have an M&A department. So I know a little bit about this, but that's run by uh, Dylan, who's our um, vice president of uh, mergers and acquisitions. So if you want to email me directly, I'm happy to kind of put you in connection with him. But the one is, um, you know, you first off, first thing is you want to make sure your contracts are in the right uh, shape, right? Uh, and typically what they're looking for is you want to make sure that they're assignable, or at least they do not uh, prohibit you from assigning those contracts. Otherwise, you're going to have to get every new contract signed over, and that's going to be part of the uh, contingencies of that. Um, typically, uh, these companies, they don't like to see declining companies uh, or flat companies. They want to see companies that are going up and to the right. So they want to see high growth companies. So again, you know, like we talked about those multiples of being three to five times, um, there's a couple of different variables of why you'd be on the lower end of that versus the higher end of that. Um, but if you're growing fast, uh, and you have a higher gross book and revenue uh, per property, you're going to be towards the, the higher end of that, that five times multiple uh, for doing it. Um, and uh, I mean, there's various other things I and mean, we could literally do an entire session just on, you know, optimizing the sale of a, of a company, but uh, happy to, you know, answer any questions everybody has specifically. They can reach out to me or uh, Dylan uh, on our, uh, um, on our M&A team. So 
Carrie, I don't know if you have anything to add with when it comes to, uh, you know, the M&A side. I know that's not really your wheelhouse, but yeah, I'm not, the uh, you, you guys are the experts. I recommend them speaking to you. Okay, great. All right. Well, that is it, guys. Well, I really appreciate it. Again, if anybody uh, would like to learn more about Vintory, they can reach me directly. Again, brook at Vintory.com, or they can call me on my cell phone here. Or if they want to reach out, learn more about Safely and how you can leverage some of those tools, uh, you know, to, to differentiate yourself, you can reach out directly to Carrie, uh, Carrie at Safely.com. And that's it, guys. I really appreciate everybody's time. And thank you so much. Talk later. Cheers, everyone.